In the enclaves of Harvard and beyond the pathways of UC Berkeley, college students, armed with placards and fueled by fever-pitched rallies, are increasingly protesting against what they feel are social injustices in the Middle East. But beneath the chants and banners lies a perplexing layer of provocative misinformation and false narratives. Recent anti-Israel and pro-Palestinian protests at many universities, including Harvard, MIT, Yale, UC Berkeley, and so many more, reflect an activism that lacks an understanding of the historical, geopolitical, and philosophical aspects of the conflicts in the Middle East. Are these protests grounded in well-informed thinking, or are they a product of educational limitations in critical areas of study? These protests started almost immediately after October 7th and have increased in frequency and intensity since then. They reflect a passion by the protesting students and faculty, but do they reflect the necessary critical thinking? The definition of justice for them leans toward a singular narrative that may lack an understanding of the depth and complexity of the conflicts in the Middle East. It's a complexity that comes from decades of terror, a struggle over identities and proxies, and an ongoing effort to attack the state of Israel. This complexity calls for scholarly analysis rather than antagonistic slogans. Oversimplification creates the kind of activism that fosters binary divisiveness on campus, rather than informed analysis, discourse, tolerance, empathy, and understanding. Many students who participate in these protests have a monolithic view of what is happening, based in large part on secondhand social media and group hostility. Interviews with those students reveal gaps in their knowledge, highlighting the need for a comprehensive educational approach that raises awareness of the factors in play that lead to repeating cycles of violence. Many of them are unaware of the Balfour Declaration, the Sykes-Picot Agreement, or other events of the 20th century that have shaped the dynamics of the region. This gap suggests a need for curricula that covers more than just current headline events, but also the philosophical and historical underpinnings that have led to those events. This is essential to form sound judgments about those dynamics. Regrettably, the hostile activism we are seeing on these campuses today is substantially underinformed and can adversely affect various aspects of school and student life. It creates an environment where academic freedom is set aside and where the expression of opposing views is ignored or shouted down, leaving only a mob rule of absolutes. This alienates some members of the university community, particularly Jewish students, faculty, and staff who are targeted and threatened sometimes with violence. The anti-Semitism is clear and unacceptable. When campuses become centers of hostile protest, the role of universities as safe spaces for open dialogue, research, and scholarly debate is subverted. This raises the question of whether these schools are nurturing intellectual growth or just ideological echo chambers, and how they can achieve a better balance between activism and academia. In an era where truth and the complexity and volume of information are undermined by the speed by which it is propagated, Universities have a critical role to play. They must be bastions of comprehensive education and scholarship, where discourse is encouraged and diverse perspectives are examined with intellectual rigor. To the extent that students may engage in activism on campus, the administrators and faculty involved must ensure that that activism is tested by knowledge and critical thinking rather than by rampant hostility and intimidation. These institutions must focus on teaching their students to analyze complex problems and multiple perspectives in an academic culture of informed dialogue and debate. They must train educated, thoughtful, and fair-minded leaders to serve the nation, and we must hold them accountable to do so. The protesters we see on the campuses today do not meet that expectation. The challenge of these schools is to transform this combative activism into positive contributions to the global dialogue on social justice and human rights. Don't you agree? How do you feel about this?